the first a nail biter of a World Series with a connection you can trace right back to the Lilac City. Game seven between Chicago and Cleveland, more than 2,000 miles away, but the Cubs starting pitcher a little closer to Spokane than you might think. Tonight, Chicago looking for its first World Series title since 1908, and they'll call on the right arm of a young man with Spokane roots in the process. KXY4's Jack Ferris is live at Spokane Indians at Vista Stadium tonight, and Jack, what is the connection here? Yeah, Nadine, as you mentioned tonight, Kyle Hendricks takes the mound in Game 7 of the World Series with the weight of a city on his right arm. Now, while it's been 112 years since the last Cubs World Series title, it's only been five years since Hendricks took the mound right here at a Vista Stadium. The starting pitcher for the Cubs this afternoon. After being drafted in the eighth round by the Rangers out of Dartmouth University, 21-year-old Kyle Hendricks wasn't sure about his future. So it was pretty hectic there for a few days, figuring out where I'm going and all that. But you know, now I'm here and you know, I'm getting more comfortable as, as the days go by. So the season should be fun. A lot of the 2011 season might have been fun. Hendricks' handful of appearances hardly caught the attention of the Spokane Indian staff. Yeah, he actually worked uh, mostly out of the bullpen with us that year. Um, so I think he had thrown, you know, a fair amount of innings with Dartmouth, so they wanted the limited innings. Um, so, yeah, he worked out of the bullpen through two innings here, two innings there, and did well. But, you know, I don't think really, honestly, anybody took note of him at that time. Five years removed from being an afterthought for the Indians, Hendricks now finds himself on the game's biggest stage with Cy Young worthy numbers and more than just a memory of Spokane. Earlier this year, the right-hander proposed to Emma Kane, a Lilac City native whom he met during his stint in Eastern Washington. If the Cubs Game 7 starter gets in trouble tonight, manager Joe Madden just might turn to another Indians alum, reliever C.J. Edwards, known affectionately four years ago in Spokane as the String Bing Flinger. Well, he was, he was really a character. I mean, he came as a, a 48th rounder uh, out of nowhere, Prosperity, South Carolina, you know, a little town with, you know, a thousand people or so, um, and he was just—he was just a little toothpick, um, you know, the skinniest kid in the world. But you know, he stepped onto the mound and he threw like Randy Johnson. Um, and yeah, the name String Bean Slinger kind of caught on just because he was—he was so skinny. Left side. So if the Cubs get a win at Cleveland tonight, baseball purists might credit an eighth rounder from the Ivy League and a 48th rounder from South Carolina. But we'll tip our cap to two former Indians of the Spokane variety. Now we heard there from Spokane Indians PR director Bud Barather, who of course knew both players during their time here in Spokane. He admits he had some nerves last night, not a lot of sleep in anticipation for the biggest game of Hendricks' career. I'll bet. So Jack, is he doing anything, Hendricks, uh, anything special for the game tonight? You know, Nadine, I, I asked Bud that, but he was clear he didn't have specific plans, but one thing's for sure, he's going to watch the game in a quiet place, so no bars for Bud tonight. Reporting live from Avista Stadium, Jack Ferris, KXLY4 News. Oh, that's great. Thanks a lot, Jack.